Welcome to church. I'm glad you could join us. I really hope that our togetherness this morning will make a difference in your life and the life of the people around you. Let's listen to Psalm 84. Joey is going to read it to us. So let's just quiet that, quieten our hearts and listen to what's on the mind of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and a swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Barca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appear before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your cause than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we know that you look after us better than you look after the birds and nature. That we are part of your amazing creation. That you made us into your image. And that each one of us is special in your eyes. Lord Jesus, you know where each one of us is, what's going on in our lives, what's happening, what, what we worry about or afraid about. What brings us joy? Thank you that we may come this morning together like this. Thank you that you give us your word and you give us your community of Christian friends and, and you give us church and that we know it is all there to help us grow, help us have a healthy relationship with you, Lord Jesus. And if we pray this this morning, we know that you listen and you are here and and you're going to use this sermon not only in, all, in, in our lives, but also in the lives of those people that are connected to us, that come in contact with us in this week. And that your word is everlasting. And that your word and your spirit will change people's lives, will build us up, will make us the people you want us to be. Lord Jesus, if we, we're having Holy Communion this morning, if we're sharing in your, in your death and your resurrection, may it be a blessing to each one of us. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. I want to invite you this morning to share with us in Holy Communion. It's a special occasion to, to share in the Lord's death and His resurrection and in His life. So wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Um, please come and join us. Faith is that point in our life where our lives and our world connect with God's life and His world. It's where God meets us. It's where God's plan crosses into our world. And that's that point in our lives where we often don't know what to do, where we don't have answers, where, where we are in trouble, broken, sad, afraid. It is, it is like that for people like Barry and Felicia when their when they're little boy is in the hospital and the, the medical world can't help them. Lord, what now? It's like that for people who, who, who have a father or mother or a very dear friend that's critically ill or passed away in South Africa and there's nothing they can do. And then we ask again, Lord, what now? It's like that for people who lost their work, lost their income, 
and I have to look after people and they can't. You know what the law does? On this crossroad where our lives meet his life, he plants a cross and keeps his son. And that changes everything. Because now, um, even if we are afraid, and even if we don't know what to do, and even if we um, are sad, or, or even if we're broken, it's not the end. Because suddenly it's okay not to know. And suddenly it's okay to trust the Lord. That's faith. I heard the sad story about a, a, a slave that wrote about their journey from Africa to America. It goes as follows. The only sound that would carry Africans over the water was the moan. On the slave ships, the moan became the language of stolen strangers, the sound of unspeakable fears flowing from each wrecked body. One imagine the spirit of God moaning as it hovers over the deep during the Genesis account of, re of creation. And the moan becomes a birthing sound, the first movement towards a creative response. And that's exactly what the Holy Communion is about. It reminds us that Jesus was broken, that he was afraid, that he didn't know what lies ahead, and that he was even at that point where he could say, my Father, why have you forsaken me? We drink wine and it reminds us of the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from our sins and heals us and starts something creatively new in our lives. So if we this morning on that crossroad where we celebrate Holy Communion we take bread and we break it and we share it and we know our lives matter. And then we take wine and we drink it and we share it and we know that the blood of Jesus on the cross is there to make us new, to start creatively something in our lives. The Lord is not yet finished.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3 uh, from verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went through the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. Verse 5. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Israel is at a place where they are ready to move into a new land. And, and each time you move into something new, if it, even if it's something personal um, in your life, or if it's a new work or a new relationship, or after the death of someone, you've got to uh, piece your life together and start afresh, or, or a, a new future after the corona time. It's exactly the same for the Israelites. They've got to move into a new land. And they're at that crossroad of faith. Where we realize, where we come to, uh, where, where, where we suddenly discover that our lives matter to God. And he gives them two things to do. The first challenge we find in chapter 3. He says, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, chapter 3, verse, verse 3. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow the ark. And the reason he gives is in this four where it says, Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. Israel are told to follow the ark. And for the Israelites, the ark of the covenant of the Lord was something that represented God. If they see the ark, they know God. We are in the midst of God. God's here. Because the, in, the ark carry with it Moses' stuff. Um, the way the Lord took them out of Egypt through the desert time for 40 years. Moses' stuff represent the way that God is leading them. And in the ark there was manna. And manna represented what the Lord, that the Lord will provide for them. And in the ark was the two tables of the covenant. To say, listen, this is what, how you've got to live. This is how you um, are faithful if you follow this. So for the Israelites to follow the ark, it means that I trust the Lord that He know the way. That I trust the Lord that He will provide. That I trust the Lord that He will teach me how to live. Because I've never been on this road before. And the story goes further. In verse 13, the, the Lord tells Joshua, listen to this. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all earth, set foot in the Jordan, its water flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. The Lord told the Israelites, follow the ark. Follow the Lord. Trust in him. Because if you do that, if you do that, if you are willing to trust him, you will see a miracle. And then we, we see how the priests take the ark, pick it up, walk through the whole camp towards the river. And when they got to the river, it wasn't flood, but they didn't matter. They just, they just walked into the river. And the moment their feet touched the water, it blocked off. We must always remember that we are never alone. That we are always in God's presence. It doesn't matter how strange our future is. It doesn't matter what lies ahead. It doesn't matter how, how, how everything is changing around us. It doesn't matter what your personal difficulty or situation is. We are never alone. The Lord's with us. The Lord is leading actually us in the way. 
because we read these priests, they just walked straight into the river. They, they trusted the Lord so much, there wasn't a moment of hesitation in their, in their actions. And they stood there in the middle of the river until each and every one of the Israelites went through. We don't need just to start with the Lord. We can finish with him as well. And he will be with us every step of the way. Because when these priests walked into the river, the water dammed up. It's sometimes difficult to trust the Lord. It's sometimes difficult to make a decision that you are going to do the unthinkable. It's sometimes difficult to be faithful. But you know what? If we don't do it, we're not going to see the miracle. If we're not willing to, to trust the Lord, if we're not willing to do the impossible, we're not going to see the miracle. Of course, the Israelites would have been afraid. Joshua 3 tells us that the, river, the Jordan River was in flood. And of course, they were afraid of the new future in a new land that was strange and scary. And of course, we, we are sometimes in situations where our plans don't work out. And then it's important that we don't look around, don't look at the flood and the deep waters, but that we trust the Lord, put our trust in Him. In, 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 in Isaiah 43 verse 2, the Lord says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, that you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's God's promise. He's going with us. He leads the way. He goes with us all the way. Israel is at a crossroads. And they're in a situation where God meets up with them. And they are challenged to follow the Lord. They had another choice. But the only alternative for them was to go back to the desert or go back to slavery. 40 years in vain. That wasn't a choice. We have a choice. We can follow the Lord. We can trust Him. We can trust that He's with us and He will provide and He will lead us and He will help us to be faithful. Because that's his way into a new time and into a new land. The second challenge the Lord comes is what we read, read about in verse 5. Chapter 3 verse 5. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Repent. Cleanse yourself. Consecrate yourself. Sort out your baggage. So that they help people to move. And, and every time we moved, I realized if I opened the attic, I, I discovered stuff that, that I forgot I had. Stuff that I didn't use in four, five, six, seven, even up to ten years. Stuff that not of any value to me anymore. I have seen so many people that move to a new house and leave a lot of stuff on the street. Because we can't, we've got to leave baggage behind. In our lives, it's the same. We are challenged to leave our baggage behind. We can't move into a new space, into a new time, into a new place. If we don't get rid of baggage that weighs us down. The Lord wants to do something new. The Lord wants us to prepare our hearts and soul and minds to cleanse ourselves. To open ourselves up for him to work. And then we will see the miracle. It's very really difficult to trust the Lord. To be faithful to follow him. If there's stuff that's keeping you back. I don't know what's that in your life. Maybe it's your selfishness. Maybe it's a, it's a sin that you are hiding away. Maybe it's a broken relationship. I don't know what your baggage is, but I know the Lord wants to deal with it. 
because he's got bigger plans for you. And isn't that what the Holy Communion is about? That Jesus said, I, I, I give you my body, I give you my blood to cleanse you, to prepare you for something new, to do creative work in you. That's what we believe. What happened here in this spot in Israel's history determined their identity. Uh, became a pattern for the future. Because to a certain extent it says, this is the kind of people we want to be. We want to be a kind of people that trust the Lord. And know that He will lead the way. We want to be the kind of people that are faithful to Him. We want to be the kind of people that live without baggage. That are open and ready for the Lord to work in. What guarantees do we have? How do we know this is the better path? A thousand years later, Jesus died on the cross. On the crossroads. He gave his son. And bread and wine will always remember, will always remind us that you can trust the Lord. That you can follow him. And that he will follow through on all his promises and will do miracles in your life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you that you are here, that we are in your presence. And that you are changing lives every day, everywhere. And that you are at this moment working in our lives. That you will cleanse us and get rid of our baggage that we carry with us for such a long time. That you want us to deal with stuff that weighs us down and keep us away from being faithful. Keep us from following you. Keep us from trusting you. And we know our future is in your hands. And we want to trust you with that. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you are God the provider. Thank you that you are the one that knows us and loves us like no one on earth. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. We've got an opportunity to to share with, in giving as well. So um, you've got all the information here about how you can give. Thank you for each one of you for what you are giving to the church and to the Lord's work. We've got a long list of people that that are that's celebrating their birthday this week. Bill Patterson and Edward Pastorius today. On the 14th, Barbara Bullock and Ilka Kutsia. Melanie Holroyd, the 14th as well. Melanie, congratulations. Tinas Buchner, the 15th. Um, Anneke de Klerk, the 16th. May it be a blessed year for each one of you. I want to thank all of you that contributed um, to the Gift of Warmth project. Uh, we, have, we bought 230 blankets. That's going to make a, life, a difference in 230 people's lives. So thank you for each one of you for that small contribution. I want to pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. That he will shine his countenance upon you and give you peace. I know he will lead you. And I know you can trust him. Amen.